Good day and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm actually going to be going over how to progress in uh, mining with your story missions. Now before I get into the video, I'd like to please ask you to leave a like, subscribe or comment on my video. And if you don't like the video, please leave a dislike and leave a comment as to where I went wrong. Okay, now getting into the topic of uh, industry player soloing, uh, not so when taking on uh, missions or encounters there are two options one is to go through with the corp fleet and the second is to go through solo now if you are going through with the corp fleet obviously that means your corp is well uh, balanced and everything is working fine now if your corp isn't well balanced and everything isn't working fine that's when you're going to have a problem so let's think about it in that sense your corp isn't balanced, you have the greedy player or you are the greedy player, nobody wants to help you. So how do you go through the entire storyline and the entire story mission without uh, having to have to face off everything in the wrong manner? So going into the story, the first thing to think about is uh, if you're going with the fleet, you're obviously just going to use the fleeting operation, listen to the fleeting commander, and listen to what he tells you to do. He'll tell you where to fly, and you can even run it in a frigate, or you can run it in your IBIS, depending on what the, what the fleet commander tells you you can do. So here's how it's going to go if you're running the story missions as a, uh, as a solo industry main. Now, you're not going to take off time from learning industry skills just to complete your vessel you are actually going to keep going at it uh, with just the uh, industry skills so you you have two options when it comes to completing these missions solo and this will go all the way up to uh, the medium mission mission which is the second one after your small mission your small mission has three requisites your medium mission let's say it has Four requisites and an elite. So there are two ships which will work in this category perfectly. I haven't discussed this previously because I've only started to investigate which ships work best, which ships to use, and your options are the Caracal, and the other option is the Vexor. And the best ship to run for you is the Navy issue. Now, if you have been doing your industry correctly, you should be a mega millionaire. Or you should be a billionaire when it comes to how much of resources you've mined. That's provided you in the right corp, you're doing things the right way. And let's say that you're the greedy player, so you have something like 1.5 billion ISK saved up. So the first thing you're going to do is buy an elite ship. You might be able to craft an elite ship if you've been doing industry correct. If you're just doing mining and you only have mining skills learned and you can't craft anything, uh, purchase one off the market or purchase one from inside your corp depending which one is cheaper and your two options as I said was the Vexa and the Karaka you're going Navy issue regardless of anything else now I'm actually just gonna fit this one up with the EM weapon so the next thing for you to realize is if you are running this uh, vessel as a industry comp, you are going to be running the elite gear on it to get the best possible DPS, the best possible range, everything to the best for you. Now, the next thing to think about is what type of low slot should I run? Now, you're running missions, so where I have a shield extender, you're going to swap out the shield extender for a warp disruptor. So, you're going to have a shield hardener. Uh, shield booster and an afterburner now if you're not in such a rich class of player it still doesn't make any difference this is what you're going to need to progress through all the story missions and not doing story missions is actually what you where you should be as an industry player you should only start getting into the story around t89 that's once your industry is almost completely learnt or if it is completely learnt if my calculations are correct on the times of each one of the advanced skills and the number of advanced skills, uh, every player should reach, this was at the standard 30 SP gain that we were gaining originally, provided that the times don't change with your SP gain. Uh, 
uh, we should all reach um, oops, sorry we should all reach uh, T7 in another three weeks time we should still actually be uh, starting T6 right now we shouldn't be as far as we are in T6 nobody should be at this range in T6 as yet if it wasn't for the boost so we should all be somewhere near a thousand hours to go and that's also including the free SP and everything that we've gained that's boosted us up towards uh, this low ranging time of 300 uh, hours to the next uh, tech level so thinking about it right here all your skills are on the industry side as you can see my industry is very basic and my ship side is reaching closer to 20% on each of the four aspects, but I've also learned some social science. Now, as you can see, there's corp management and there's trade. Now, I've learned a little bit of trade, and here's something else that I can mention. When it comes to your advanced skills, without a complete regular skill, the advanced skill doesn't help you because it's a prerequisite that the first skill must be completely learned. Sorry. Um, so, you are going to be here in industry technology. You are going to be learning manufacturing possibly, or you are going to be here in mining. And when you learn mining, you're going to learn both of these, uh, standard mining and strip mining. You're going to be an expert by the end of T6. Now that's where you should be already because that's how easy it is to complete this. And then here comes the difficult part for you in uh, processing. Let's see how many there are. Okay, I'll go all the way down. Let's start. One for scrap. Two for precious ore. Three for rare ore. Four for special ore processing. Five. Six. So there are six skills. And overall, six skills that you're going to have to learn so that you can process ore quick, quicker. So six times three, that's 18. 18 times the complete, uh, what was it, 250 hours a piece. Um, 18 times 250. I'm not sure on the exact time on it. Uh, I can't even do the math in my head right now. It's a little bit uh, sore. I can't even get it correct. So times two would be 500 times nine. Uh, five times nine is 45, 4,500 hours. 4,500 hours is basically from the time you started the game till the time you reach T7. Uh, so that's the amount of time it would have taken you to complete all of this. And you still had a little bit of extra time for two skills at 250, 500. That means in T7, you would have completed this. Production, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine times three, that's gonna be 27. Okay, so basically all the way into T8, you're going to be doing this research. You'll only complete just the basic industry by the time you reach T8, if you were just focusing on just this tab. And then you go into applied science, and you have to learn each one of the factions um, principles so that you can produce their vessels. Then you have to learn faction tech to improve your blueprint production. So basically, you are going to have six of each of these to complete for your particular faction to be able to produce ships efficiently. So that's six times 250. Actually, I'm, I'm averaging it at 250 because of the difference in times. Um, it might be slightly longer. It might be something like 300. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm just averaging it out at 250 because I haven't touched any expert skills myself as yet. In military, there's a lot more skills to learn individually, but I don't think they are as taxing as the industry skills. So once you've completed enough um, applied science, and enough uh, industry technology, you're going to have a good boost on the market. You're going to be able to mine more efficiently, get more materials, throw it out on the market, or cooperate inside your 
cooperation. Maybe three of you work together and basically that's where you were. That's why you focused on your industry. So switching out from it to jump into a military tech, losing something like uh, two or three days, that's 48 to 72 hours is a massive loss. That means when everybody gets further ahead, you're going to lose. And in military tech, it isn't just uh, 72 hours. It's going to be about seven or eight of those 72 hours just to get that balance that you want. And you're going to lose all that time to your industry. That's going to be a couple hundred hours gone. And you lose one whole um, research tab just because you did uh, military tech instead of your industry. So how are you going to balance it out? Using the Vexa, you can use drones. And with the Vexa, you get extra range on your drones. Now, as you saw, I have a 21 kilometer range on my ship. With the Vexa, you're going to have something closer to 30 kilometer range on your, with your ship. That keeps you out of warp disruptor range 90% of the time. And equipping the right weapon on your Vexa allows you to eat through armor on a ship. And then you're just going to finish off the ship in the end. That's why the Vexa is the easiest ship to use for someone who doesn't have research. Okay, now going further, the next thing for you to remember is why you are using Elite Rigs. And if you're using a Caracal, the reason is simple. Once more, it's that you don't have to focus on research. You have the range of missile weapons, you have the boost that comes from the ship, and you can keep the 30 kilometer radius on average, and you can hit a vessel. And you're not doing one type of damage, you're doing all the types of damage, so you're gonna eat through the shield at a constant rate, eat through the armor at a constant rate, you're gonna destroy the hull at a constant rate, and that's why you're using the Caracal. And the reason why you're going Navy issue is because you don't have the boost on uh, engineering. You haven't learned uh, cruiser engineering to improve it. You might have learned uh, frigate engineering to improve your mining but it's not going to help you in this situation. Okay, so continuing on. Now, since this is where your focus is on the industry side, under the clones, and you are going to learn Kaldari or Ama or Minmata or Galliant, one of those is your faction. And you learn everything there first, and then you have to progress further by the end of T8 or T... Uh, I believe by the end of T8, you should have everything learned. That's if you're not running at the ridiculous SP rates that a lot of us are. So, um, how do I explain the rest of this? You are running a Navy class vessel because you've been profiting more than the PVE players. You are going to profit more. It's easier for you. You can run simple tactics. You can run in small groups. You can run a three-man team to produce ships and throw them on the market. And you can produce ships at a ridiculously cheap rate in comparison to any other method. And if you're running in a corp and you're all industry-based and there's no PVE core, there's no PVP core and you don't have those players to help you, you can trade between each other with the different factions to get the different ships. And you can get a Vexa and you can get the medium drones and you can go for it. Because you're going to have to purchase the blueprints of the market since you don't have a PVE core in this sense. So, or you can go and just purchase the drones directly off the market. makes it much easier. So, while you were running the profit on materials originally, this is where you lose out in the game. So, completing the story isn't really so important. It's only going to become important once we breach the T89 mark. Now, the PvE players, the story is all that they have. That's where you are focused. That's your main purpose in this game. That's how come the PvE players are going to rush through the story and they're going to complete all the smalls, they're going to complete all the mediums, they're going to complete the more difficult missions, and they're going to be like masters of combat. And the PvE core is going to have a lot of fights with PvP cores from other teams, and the PvP cores and the PvE cores are basically the same thing. It's just the difference in what rigs they use in the mid slot. <clears throat> Sorry about that. This is actually my third rerun of this video. So my voice is a bit uh, coarse. And the first time that I did it, I did it almost 35 minutes. The second time was almost 25 minutes. And this is my third run trying to keep the video concise. 
I went a lot off topic originally. So being an industry main means you don't learn anything with regards to the military until you've mastered your industry. And once your industry is mastered, that's when you just go wild. Once your industry is completely mastered, you're going to start learning military tech. You're going to learn a weapon class, example, missiles. And you're just going to learn, let's say at T9 when the battleships are available, you're just going to learn large missiles. You're going to learn your battleship tech. You're going to learn your EM, your weather fires, all of that. You're going to learn just your basics in the field and you're going to have a, a, a top class battleship and you're going to take it out and you're going to have fun on the map and you're going to destroy other players. And similarly for different type of players, uh, you're going to focus differently. If you decide that once you've completed industry and you are a multi-billionaire, let's say for example you've got 600 billion stashed inside your wallet, that is actually the perfect time for you to go out and do the stories. You buy a very strong overpowered ship, you jump in and you just use that fi that uh, firepower to overpower any other vessel in your range or proximity. You're just going to blast right through them like they weren't there. You can run triple web of fires, four web of fires, because some of the vessels actually have six uh, mud slots, if I was correct. I saw seven mud slots on the one ship. So you're going to have that opportunity to stop a frigate and destroy it with the battle ship in the end. So that's where you are going to progress to. And that's where you want to go. You want to skip all of this um, hardcore fighting, the difficult fights, and actually jump in at that late progression. But if you want to do it now for fun to keep yourself from getting bored, you're going to have to buy an expensive ship, overfit it with items and not do the research so that you can keep progressing in profit. <clears throat> Sorry about that. As I said, my voice is going a bit hoarse. So your progression is going to be far higher in the industry. And once you have 100% of any one of these industry tabs, you are going to be really, really difficult to match in the game. You're going to buy all of your uh, SP gain chips and you're going to have 100% on the natural science. Because that's the only other thing. Oh wait, no, planetology is here. Yeah, I forgot about that. So yeah, you're going to have to do planetology as well. And this is where I have most of my skills in natural science. So once this is done, then it's all over for me. Once this is done, then it's over for me as well. Okay, so moving forward, after you have completed all your industry tech and you're focused into military tech, when everything is learned up, that's going to be above T10 when no when nobody's really focused on learning anything new. They was probably going to throw in a few new skills here and there, throw in a few new items, you know, give us things to progress towards. And that's just going to be quick, easy learning for us. We're going to have excess time. We're going to be jumping across the border. Uh, me as a military, I might be able to do more uh, industry and I might be able to do strip mining or regular mining and ore processing. And that's the progression. That is the time scale you're looking at in this game. And when you think about the time scale in this game, it's not 60,000 hours. It's something like 100,000 hours to reach Tech 10. And at 100,000 hours, you should be a master of the game across the board. You shouldn't just be a military commander at that 100,000 hours. And you shouldn't just be a industry super magnet at 100,000 hours. You should be an Eve Echoes player at 100,000 hours. You should be able to run out with any vessel you want, take on any mission you want, and fly through it like it's child's play. Because that's what it should be for you. You should be that efficient. And that's what it's going to end up being because I doubt that they're going to improve PvE non-stop all the way till the end with us because if they do it they're going to make the start missions almost impossible for new players and when a new player decides to fleet he's going to have the disadvantage of the high-end players uh, uh, high-end players difficulty in the mission so all that is most probably being taken into consideration by scope so that is what I'm just saying when you run with a Vexer if you watch my Vexa Navy issue build, 
it, it explains what you're going to do to get through missions and ships. That is the best build for it. And the only thing that you swap out is a shield extender for a warp uh, stabilizer. Same thing with the Navy Caracal Edition. You follow my build. Let me just open it quickly. You follow my build. The only thing that you replace on it is the shield extender with a warp stabilizer. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope this here was explaining enough to you on where you should go and the reason why you should be so expensive with your ship choice as an industry magnet if you want to have fun in the stories. Progressing in the story is not necessary for you as an industry magnet. It's only going to be necessary for you at a later stage in the game. So thank you for watching.